So today I'm talking to Nick Robelick of Pixel Metal about his game Sombrero. Sombrero is a spaghetti western multiplayer party game where you can sit on the couch and shoot people with guns. It's a bit of a spaghetti western. Um, there's various game modes in multiplayer including Capture the Flag, Banditos and even Deathmatch. Um, welcome to the show Nick, thanks for taking the time. Could you tell me a bit about the game from your angle? Sure. Uh... Thanks, Stu. It's um, it's basically what you said. <laughs> it's uh, it's uh, yeah. I mean, there's 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 local play and online play. Um, so that I'll I'll add that. So yeah, you can sit on your couch with your friends, which I think is probably the most fun way to play it. You know, two to four people. Uh, more people's better. Mm -hmm. uh, definitely. Uh, but you can play online too. You know, if your if your friends are somewhere else, not nearby. Yeah, or if I mean, you're like me and you're like pushing forty, and your friends have kids, you have your friends have kids, <laughs> and so like you can't always get together all the time to play video games. Hey, but adult they, responsibilities. They could be stuff. playing. They could be playing that game with their kids. I mean, so it works. Both That's right. Ways, right? Yeah. That's right. It's very, it's very colorful. There's a lot of action going on. Like I've, I've checked it out, and it's just, it's just nonstop action on the screen. I think that would appeal to a broad audience. But the thing that sort of got me was it was a mix of various things that I'd seen in other games, but all sort of brought together. So you've got the platform element, you've got the multiplayer, but then you've sort of got the first person shooter things brought into that 2D environment. So what, I mean, what inspired you to make this game? Were there other games out there that you thought, oh, I like this and I like that, let's, let's mix it all together? Uh, no, <laughs> it was more, it was more uh, at, the, at the time, you know, I was, I was working full time doing advertising and marketing stuff uh and, and i wanted a side project to do mm -hmm. and uh you know i remember you know i grew up with atari and nintendo and and you know sega and all that stuff back in the early days uh and i kind i just kind of miss, missed multiplayer games that you could you could sit down and play with your friends or or against your friends yeah. um and so i started on on that and i mean that at this point was it was probably over three years ago now wow um because I just started on, you know, on the side, it was kind of a fun little thing to do at night, and uh, and then at some point, you know, not even that far into the development of like a like a not even a beta or an alpha, just like a basic basic like mechanics test, uh, I brought it to a, a like a a meetup kind of thing mm -hmm. um, in New York where people were going to show the games they were working on, uh, and people responded really well to it. So I thought, hey, well, you know, I'll, I'll keep. I'll just keep working on this and, and see what happens. And uh, yeah, years later, here we here we are. Um, you know, when when I started on it, there, Towerfall wasn't out yet. You know, Duck Game didn't exist yet. None of the none of the bigger you know indie multiplayer games uh, were out yet. Mm -hmm. So so I kind of started from from a spot of um, uh, well, two spots really. So I, I feel like a lot of the games that come out now. Uh, especially on the indie side, the physics always feel wrong, like the player mm -hmm. movement. Mm -hmm. Like it doesn't ever, it doesn't ever feel tight enough. So that was that was my first thing. I was like, okay, well, I want to make something that feels tight and like, you know, not not how you know Super Mario Brothers Two was back then, but how I remember Super Mario Brothers being. You know, very tight controls. Uh, now you go back, they're not quite so tight. But but that was that was kind of a starting point. Um, but even even before that, before Sombrero came became Sombrero, I had just I had put together a little again just like a little demo thing, a little test thing because uh, you know most of my work has been on the design side, not the development side, so that was all new to me, uh, really before starting the game. Um, I, I was doing like a twin stick shooter, you know, like a Smash TV Robotron kind of thing, because uh, you know I just think those games are, are are fun, you know, they're kind of mindless action games, uh, and I just I, I built I think a whole stage. Of, uh, of it and spent like a ton of time on artwork and enemies and like different weapons and then i got to the end of like you know finishing out that stage with the mini boss at the end and i was like this isn't fun at all <laughs> i was like i spent all this time on this and this is just like every other twin stick shooter game like this i you know this is just not you know i i, I made a really polished thing that already exists and other people have probably done better great <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I can't sell that uh, and so, and that's when I started to transition into Sombrero. It's like, well, maybe I could take the twin stick, uh, you know, the twin stick controls of the overhead of an overhead game like Smash Brother, or sorry, not Smash Brother, Smash TV, and try to apply it to a 2D platformer, you know, party game kind of like Smash Brothers. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So that's why you know you end up, you ended up you can shoot in every direction, which I don't think, I don't think any of the other multiplayer 
know the smaller multiplayer games have right now the 2d the 2d ones um and i thought that added a lot to it uh you know and then of course went into adding more weapons and power-ups and and a lot of that stuff was still based off of you know all, all the code and ideas from uh from from doing the twin stick shooter uh not the theme mm -hmm. so much the theme the theme came very very separate uh but just the mechanics of it because i tried to start it with you know the, after spending so much time to building it, build a single stage, you know, like a vertical slice of, of the twin stick shooter, I was like, well, I, I don't want to do that again. I don't want to spend all the time on art and then just throw it away again. So it became a, a situation where it's like, oh, well, I'm just going to do the simplest things I can do, squares moving around, um, and see if I can get that feeling fun instead of, you know, looking good. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's more or less what I took to the first showing. You know, it, it, it was very, very early versions of, of, I think, like three or four of the characters out of the 20 or so that ended up in the game, uh, just to see how people responded to it. And I mean, and it looked like shit. <laughs> you know, it was just like, it was just the worst. Everything was blocky and blurry, but people sat down and played it, and they had they had fun with it and had a lot of repeat people come back. Um, so that was a nice, you know, a nice little boost, uh, a little, a nice little ego boost, really, uh, to 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 try and take it a little bit, a little bit farther, uh, and that's when all the other characters showed up, and I added more stages and you know more weapons and and all that kind of stuff. Wow, yeah, I mean, so you've done. I mean, you mentioned a few terms there that obviously shows your your advertising background. I mean, you said vertical slice, things like that. So basically, initially, you sort of tried to say, well, look. I'll do the whole thing so it's like a, a slice of a complete product here so it looks like a finished product but it's only a very small portion of that finished product and you felt that yeah that was a lot it was a bit same same with all the other stuff so you sort of took it back a few notches and said well look i'll focus on the gameplay the feeling of it the you know that kind of thing and then build around that once people are happy with it yeah right yeah that's that that's more or less what I did. And I, I mean, I, I kept, uh, you know, I kept the weapons, and I think the uh, well, the weapon mechanics and the uh, you know directional shooting from from the twin stick, and kind of threw everything else away. I think I might have kept uh, some of the stage loading code, but I, other than that, it was just I, I just tossed it all away. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and it was just it was a single stage to you know just to give me an idea, having never built an entire game by myself before. Um, if I can make something like that fun in you know a specific amount of time, I had I had put a time limit on myself so I didn't end up spending you know months and months on the single stage. Mm. Uh, that's, yeah, that's a massive undertaking. I mean, yeah. So you were the sole developer, designer, artist, animator, the lot. I mean, from your advertising background, obviously you sort of came from a bit more of the graphics side of things. I mean, tell me more about how you got into the development, or was that always something you did on the side anyway? Uh, it was something I did uh, a little bit for work. Uh, but not not for games ever, um, and, and a little bit on the side for for games here and there. But I, but the stuff I was doing on the side was, uh, I mean, fi probably when I started at Sombrero, twelve or thirteen years before that, so fifteen or sixteen years ago now. Uh, you know, when I interned at a couple small uh, video game shops when I was in high school. Mm -hmm. uh, so I hadn't really done much development since then. My most of my you know, I guess what would these days qualifies development experience was you know javascript or, or action script and flash for uh, mostly for for web stuff you know for websites for uh for the ads that everybody hates uh for for microsites you know for for probably you know someone's so and so's launching a new product and they want to do a fun little animated site for it you know back then we would still build that all in flash uh and uh, and yeah, so I didn't have a ton of a ton, not really a ton of development experience. I, I knew enough about JavaScript and and you know ActionScript to be dangerous, but yeah. <laughs> I had never really done an entire thing from scratch like like a video game before. Yeah. So what did you actually build uh, Sombrero with? What what engine or what tools? Uh, I ended up using well, the game engine is Construct Two, mm -hmm. uh, which is all JavaScript based, okay. um, and and that was. Part of the reason that I that I chose it I, at the at that time actually I was using um, before I started on the twin stick thing I was you know spending a lot of time in in Unity you know getting getting up to speed on that uh, but at that point the 2D tools in Unity were not great uh, and, and a lot of it was third party and it was very hacky so I, I just started asking around I started doing some of my own research online uh, to see what decent 2D engines were out there. Mm -hmm. And and it seemed like it had a you know a decent enough uh, feature set uh, to do what I wanted to do. Initially the game was only meant to be, you know, uh, uh, on PCs. Mm -hmm. um, and 
and I just kind of kind of went from there. And it was it was it, it has this weird kind of event system as opposed to straight scripting or, or coding. But because it's based on JavaScript, it was it was similar enough to what I already knew that I could get up to speed in it uh, very quickly. Mm -hmm. um, and then animations, uh, well, you know, the typical programs for the art, you know, Photoshop, Illustrator, uh, After Effects, uh, Premiere for any video that needed to be edited for it. Uh, and these are all Adobe products, and uh, and then for, and then for the animation, I used uh, a, a program called Spriter okay. that lets you you know create a two D character and put a skeleton in it and animate it kind of like how you'd animate a three D character but just specifically in two D. You know, that, instead of having to draw is, every frame, it, that is really that. I just yeah, that is really cool because I was talking to someone the other day about that who was actually doing a, a, a pixel art game and they said the most laborious pain can you know painful task was the actual oh the guy's facing this way now he's got to face the other way but you got to you can't just mirror it because like the sword's got to be in the right hand versus the shield and like well I would tell I would tell that person not to worry about what hand the shield or the sword is in <laughs> because that's the last thing they should be worrying about because no one's going to notice it during gameplay like nobody notices it yeah. uh, you know every every game we remember some nerd, uh, some nerd doesn't worry about it will we'll send you yeah. a nasty tweet or uh, give you a you know zero star review Sword yeah. is not well, you right can hand. you can you can offer that person a job so they can do it themselves. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they right. can see how they can see how long it takes to do that and why you didn't do it. Exactly. Um, yeah. But yeah, yeah. So so it, it animates kind of like paper, not quite like South Park style, but it's uh -huh. paper cutout kind of kind of like uh, the recent uh, Rayman games that yeah. Ubisoft has has been putting out the two D games. So that that same the same kind of thing that 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 they were doing there. Yeah, so you mentioned also before that you showed it off to a bunch of people at like a show in New York. Have you had, I mean, have you been to various conferences and shows and meetups like that? Is that where you've got a lot of your feedback from? Yeah, I mean, uh, for, most, for most of the time I was just doing the game by myself. It was really only maybe the, like the last six months I, I had a, a publisher. Uh, and, they, and they weren't super involved in, um, you know, defining what the game was because that was already defined. <laughs> Uh, so, so a lot of a lot of the feedback I got, you know, like I said, being 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 a little bit older, not being able to get together, people all the time would be the one time we could get together, which was either a, a meetup group um, or or uh, these little expos. There's there's a Microsoft once a month hosts uh, kind of an indie, indie. I think it's about once a month an indie game expo. Mm -hmm. uh, so that was the one that I went to. Uh, initially, and, and that's probably the one that I've gone to the most because they have an office in New York, so it's really easy for for me to go there. And they'll, you know, they'll go to a decent crowd, a, a few hundred people, uh, along with you know, maybe another hundred uh, developers. Um, and it's really hard to get honest feedback from other developers because mm -hmm. uh, they don't they don't want to say anything mean because yeah. they know you're trying. You know, yeah. they want that you want to make sure you get that gold star for trying uh and then the people that would come and play the games were just vicious <laughs> and, I, oh, this and is it was it. perfect yeah. and this it was is... the best feedback that's what you it want was, because yeah, yeah. I, I noticed that like say for example on facebook or twitter like when someone puts out the screenshot of the stuff they're working on nine times out of ten the response is wow that's amazing that's awesome and i mean i respond to people that's amazing or awesome when I actually think it. But I tend to think a lot of people just say something's amazing when it looks like a piece of shit. So, because they don't want to hurt people's feelings and everyone's trying and they don't want to dishearten them because they know how hard it is to do it themselves. But I don't know. Is this, right. a, is this a cultural thing we're going through now that maybe quality goes down because everyone is telling everyone that their stuff is good when it maybe isn't? And this is why you need to rely on gamers a bit more because they'll just say, dude, this game's shit. Uh, yes. <laughs> I don't even need to. I don't even to think about that. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, we, we've we've devolved from. Um, this is going to be very culturally specific to the U.S., so I apologize. We've 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 evolved from, uh, you know, movies or I should say, really the TV show, you know, Mash, that was mm -hmm. about like a medical a medical unit in Vietnam. We've evolved, we've we've devolved from pointed, uh, you know. Uh, bipartisan political commentary into this like pissing match of sides mm -hmm. uh, and it bleeds through into everything sadly yeah. um, but it definitely doesn't really seem to affect people who who um, who are gamers you know yeah. and not necessarily everyone who plays games uh, is is a gamer 
you know, in the sense of, of gamer gamer. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, someone who has spent a lot of time with things uh, deciding what they do and do not enjoy are, are the best people to get feedback from uh, because they want more things that they can enjoy and less things that they won't enjoy. Yeah, <laughs> so, so everything talking... they tell you is going to be very blunt. You know, it's just, I don't like this and this is why, you know, yeah. it's like, okay, great. You know, because yeah. other developers are like, well, you know, this, this mechanic it could be tweaked. Why did you do it that way? It's like, well, it doesn't matter why I did it that way. I want to know what you think of what I did. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so exactly. but tell me what you think of what I did and if you like it or not. And like, you're not, and I, and I hit a point where I tell people and, and some developers started to get it after, you know, we had talked for like a year. It's like, don't be nice to me about, about the game when I ask for feedback, yeah. you know, don't. Don't try and butter me up. Don't say. Don't try to you know uh, couch criticism in in positive language. Like just be blunt because yeah. it's going to save you time. It's going to save me time. <laughs> you know, you be don't able want to hear about all the cool things. You want to hear about what the flaws are. Is there anything that needs tweaking or fixing? You do. I mean, because you, right. the stuff that's good is good. Like you know it's good because you know a hundred people are saying it's good. What you want to hear is those voices that dissent from that and say, you know what, that's that that thing there is shit, or this doesn't feel right, or maybe if you did that, or you know, that's what you want to hear. Right, exactly. Yeah, I mean, it's not that I don't want to hear the good things either, uh, but I, but if you know whether whether someone disliked most of the game but liked a few things, or liked most of the game but disliked a few things, you know, I bo both re both ways. Like, you know, why did you like this? Why didn't you like this? Mm -hmm. um, so with some you know, arrow, what's what's been the main thing that people like, and maybe the main thing that people dislike with this game? Uh, well, people seem to like the choice of characters uh, and the art style the most. Uh, and what they dislike the most is having to use the triggers on the controller to jump. Very, <laughs> instead that of the, that is very specific. Instead of the A button. Yeah, instead of the A button. I got a lot of feedback about that. And, uh -huh. and at one point, I had, I had changed it so that you could also press the A button to, uh, to jump. And then what happened was people started complaining that because it's because it's set up like a twin stick shooter, you know, left the left analog stick moves you around the right the right analog stick, whatever direction you push it in is the direction that you will shoot. They started complaining that they had to take their finger off their trigger, basically. Uh, yep, yep, it's like, yep. well, that's why that's why I made it the triggers on the controllers. Like they, they had they told you what the the problem was, but they hadn't thought through that the solution was right. also going to be a problem. Right. Um, and I and it, it was one of those things where I didn't think it was going to work for that very reason. And it's not even one trigger. I mean, you can hit any of the shoulder buttons or the or the jump or the triggers to uh, to jump. You know, I just made any button for left handed or right handed, whatever. Who cares? Yeah. yeah. Uh, and uh, I knew it wasn't going to work, but I wanted to do it so that people could try it and then tell me it didn't work. I didn't want to just assume that because I didn't think it wasn't going to work that people would not like it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so even that I tested, you know. So I was doing, especially a around, you know, the fifty percent mark when I was trying to puzzle, you know, not not so worried about adding more content or 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 cleaning things up quite yet, uh, but worried about you know tightening the gameplay a little bit more before I started to go in to do those things. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I spent a lot of, you know, I'm talking like every week or every two weeks going to one of these things, uh, you know, one of these little expos or meetups to 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 get feedback on these changes because that's before the publisher who started doing in you know in-house QA. Um, and you send it off to testers and that kind of stuff. Uh -huh. um, the only way I could really get it tested was to take it to these to these different you know events. Mm -hmm. uh, but it was but it was a great way to meet people and a great way to get uh, you know really honest feedback from from people and 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 genuinely try to engage with the people that I wanted to give me money for the game. <laughs> so, <laughs> So it became a thing for me where you know it's like well these are you know, the the people I'm going to listen to are the people who who give me um, who give me you know honest feedback you know the yeah. the, the people that are trying to be nice about it I, I you know it's it's a little harder to to parse mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. so yeah so I read the comments on Steam <laughs> and I and I don't get upset I'm not going to be one of those one of those indie devs who has a little freak out and threatens to sue people. You know, I, I read every comment, positive or negative, and I'm like, all right, well, here's what I can do to fix that. All right, well, this person likes that, so maybe if I do this, they'll also like that. You know, it's, it seems a better way to look at it.
feedback. Actually, like I, I, I did read through your um, Steam review. I laughed. I laughed at one of them. Like, this guy is like, uh, a broken, unplayable, worst play game ever, piece of garbage, almost took my own life playing it, gave my computer herpes and AIDS. This game killed my dog. Never buy this game. They should pay you to play Wait, it. Wait, really? I, don't, I haven't read that one yet. Is that a new <laughs> that, one? That I haven't like, looked at it in like a week. I was like <laughs> 0, 0.2 hours ago, recently posted. I thought that was fucking hilarious. And so I was just like, wow, like, this is what you're going to get. But... In amongst all of, in a, like, I obviously didn't that's see a, that. <laughs> that's so awesome. is, no, but that's cool, right? Like, in amongst that though, you are going to get the people like I like. There is like one that says recommended, and they give you the too long didn't read. Like they say, here are the pros: uh, it's easy to learn, it's a fun party game, it's got controller support. I like this, I like that, and then they give you a list of the cons. And that for you as a game developer is probably gold, right? Because apart from all the trolls that get on there and you know just do funny shit like the other dude does. Like, you don't care about that because you read these comments because there will be someone who puts a comment that gives you a brilliant idea. Yeah, or I mean, even even uh, the idea or the comment itself might have a brilliant idea in it. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I think it's important, especially as a smaller, you know, developer, really, it's it's just me to be to be open to, to those kind of things. And the people that are trolling, I mean, I just think it's... I just think it's funny. I don't get upset about game, it. It's yeah. part of the game of culture. I think we have to kind of embrace that. I mean, like you were saying before, a lot of indie devs get a bit too sensitive that their game doesn't have 100% positive feedback or that, you know, someone's come and a whole army of people have come because someone posted a video on YouTube and they've all been negative or whatever. It's like, who cares? If the game is selling and you've got enough people enjoying it and it you know it, it's something that you are proud of that that's all that matters i mean a lot of these people put out games that you might not even call games and they get upset when people don't like it i mean i can understand when you put in a lot of effort and and make a game and you know it gets a negative review but you're always going to get people that don't like something and as long as you have some positive reviews that's all you care about right yeah yeah i mean the only the only reviews that really that really irritate me um, are, are, and I haven't had that many of them. I think just one or two uh, have said, uh, you know, I, I kept running into this. But oh no, I remember what it was. Someone, someone said Steam controller. It's like, oh, this game doesn't have any Steam controller support. Blah 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 uh, blah blah. I'm like, okay, well, okay, well, first of all, you're one of the five people who bought a Steam controller. <laughs> yeah. And, and and second of all, it's like it most certainly does because I and I and it was one of those things where the timing was perfect. Because mm -hmm. I had just, I, I had just, you know, maybe a week before, added um, added Steam controller support and added in uh, added in the the default profiles, to, you know, the pr the button mappings for the mm -hmm. game, uh, so that as soon as you install the game, you have those button mappings available and you don't have to do anything to change them. You don't have to do what you have to do in a lot of games that aren't set up for Steam controllers. Go in and map it yourself. Yeah. Uh, and, and I mean, it was tested and tested and tested. And it was one of those things where I read, I read it and I was like, oh man, did I like upload the wrong build or something? And so then I, you know, launched up the, mm -hmm. the public build, build, build of the game and looked at it. I was like, no, it's right here. You <laughs> will like, always, any just, piece of software, you will always yeah. get that. It's like, I can't see anything. My screen is black. Well, did you turn your computer on? Like, so in other words, they're just idiots. Like the, and, but that, that's funny as well. But the annoying part, as you just mentioned is you will actually be concerned that, holy shit, have I made a mistake? And you'll take time out of your day to actually correct a mistake that wasn't even a mistake. Right. So, um, yeah. Uh, so you still there, Nick? Hey, Oh, I've lost you for a hey, second. Hey, I think, oh, I, I accidentally switched my mic to mute. I'm sorry. I was nah, talking. I, <laughs> I was like, why can't he hear me? I, I just thought, uh, oh, no, I've really upset Nick. I mentioned something. And he no, just, no, no, <laughs> no. No, kidding. I don't get, you know, even that doesn't, you know, like even those, even those reviews don't really upset me that much. It was one of those things where I knew it was fine because I had just tested it. Yeah. Uh, but I had to, but I had to take the time, yeah, to go, to go test it again to make sure it worked. Uh, I even installed it on a machine that I hadn't installed the game on yet. Uh, to make sure it worked there, and it wasn't just because I was, you know, on my development machine. So, um, you, so that yeah. you know, it, you now like yeah, that, that, this that, is turning into a full-time job for you. Obviously, this whole game development thing. I mean, is it a career that you would recommend to other aspiring game developers? I mean, is there any sort of pros, cons, or pitfalls? Is it just something that? I mean, it's something that you wanted to do since you started playing games, maybe when you were a kid. But like, is there any advice you could offer aspiring game devs about either a how to get into it 
or B, you know, shit that you wish you had heard when you were getting into it? Yeah. Uh, I mean, the, the barrier to entry is so low at this point with, with all of the different game engines that exist and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, you know, f free or low-cost tools out there to, to create assets, um, uh, you know, audio or visual or, or whatever. Um, anyone who wants to get into it should just try to try to do it mm -hmm. and, and know that know that the first 10 times are gonna suck. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you're gonna make sh you're gonna make shitty games. Um, but other than that, I mean I don't think it's any different than any any other industry and I think it has the same pitfalls. It has um, you know y y there's the politics, uh, but those exist in every job. Mm -hmm. uh, there is uh, uh, you know the the some of the louder voices who are louder voices not because they have anything interesting to say but because they just feel the need to be heard. Mm -hmm. um, that again, I think is the same as every other industry. Uh, I think maybe it shows up more in games industry because it's a little bit smaller mm -hmm. uh, than something like advertising or, or movie making. Uh, just in terms of overall numbers of people, you know. Yeah, so what you're sort of alluding to there is like, yeah, you, you can make a game by yourself solo, but then getting the word out there, there's various channels that you can go through. And I mean, we all know that gaming media now is a piece of shit, mostly. I mean, some of it's good, but it's more of a case of you have to be on top of your own marketing. So you've got a very slick website. All the marketing stuff looks really cool. You've got a presence on Twitter. You've got a number of followers. And it's kind of you have to concentrate on that side of things as well to get the word out. You can't be reliant upon let's say some very famous independent game developer, someone that talks at conferences, you have to be able to be your own, I don't want to say it, but e-famous, like you've got to have that sort of presence out there to get your game out because you can't be reliant. And I suppose you, you mentioned earlier that you got a publisher. I mean, did that, did that kind of help as well? Uh, ups and downs. Sure. You know, the, the QA testing and, and quality control and, uh, all that stuff was was good. Um, even uh, you know, even with a publisher getting getting places to write about you is a, a different story. You know, a lot of them are going to be, uh, and again, not specific to games. Uh, mm -hmm. lo looking for an angle from mm -hmm. which to write, and that angle is either uh, you know, it, it was some more major press. That's that's. The angle is probably their own personal bias, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, to be to be straightforward about it. Uh, but that's not necessarily always a, a bad thing either. You know, sometimes that personal bias can be, I just really like games and I like talking about them. Mm -hmm. uh, and those are the kind of that's the kind of bias you want to look for. Uh, you know, not bias towards the kind of product you make, but someone who just really, really enjoys games. Yeah, uh, so and that that. That, gaming that aficionados yeah so there are, yeah. there are there are outlets out there that concentrate purely on the gameplay they don't sort of look at it and go sombrero right. are you appropriating mexican culture like i'm sure that you probably had some idiot say something like that but like, no i haven't i've only ever had people joke about it actually uh, well there no you go anything about it right so in the real world these kind of things don't happen right you know exactly. that, that that you read about a lot um and it, what, that was something that actually popped into my head at one point where I was like, man, should I change the name? And I was like, you know what? No, I'm not going to change the name. I think it's a funny name to yeah. give a Western game. I, I think it fits. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, so, and so it stayed. Uh, and, uh, and not, you know, other than, uh, you know, the, the, the print or online blog, you know, media people, uh, for games especially, I mm -hmm. think – looking towards streamers and uh, people who do Let's Plays and people who just talk about games on on YouTube or wherever, uh, or Twitch or Hitbox or, you know, pick one. Um, yeah. Or yeah. people, that, people just have, that just have big Discord channels mm -hmm. uh, where people get together and, and talk about things. Uh, these are where you're going to get fans from, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, because, you know, we don't have the marketing budget of, uh, of an Activision. You know, uh, sell. You know, we can't, we can't sell Call of Duty every year uh, and guarantee twenty million sales. Yeah, uh, I think so word, word of mouth actually works better as well, anyway. Because like this is the thing. Like you'll see big advertising campaigns on, like on the side of buildings and buses and everything for the latest Activision game. But then the word on the street, like amongst gamers, like you'll ask your friends, "Hey, have you seen that? Yeah, I played the demo. It was a piece of shit." Like. 
And so they've spent millions on advertising, but then there's a groundswell of, no, I'm not going to buy this title because it's rubbish. So th- their approach is probably not that great. Whereas the indies, you've, we, you've kind of got this approach where you can make the game. It's a low barrier to entry. You can make it yourself. You can choose the right tools. All these tools are pretty easy nowadays. You can get on Twitter. You can get on YouTube. You can get in touch with these people directly that can then uh, amplify uh, the word out about your game. And yeah, it's sort of like what you were saying before. You go to meetups. You actually speak to gamers rather than sort of have this sort of disconnect between, oh, we're making this product and we're trying to advertise it to these people that are like the peasants. It's I am making this because I am a gamer and I want to make something that these guys think is fun and I'll actually talk directly to them. I mean, that's probably the best advice that you've been sort of mentioning with the way you've sort of approached things. Yeah, well, I think it's the same as, uh, you know, some some band before they get signed, mm. right? You got to you gotta sell those CDs out of the back of your truck until, <laughs> yeah. until someone gives you a bigger place to sell them out of. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, and at that point, you know, you're you tend to be more connected to your fans when you're when you're still at that level, or not mm-hmm. even just your fans, just the you know whatever whatever community is enthusiastic about whatever you're trying to sell. You know, games or or whether it's games or music or indie films, whatever. It's all it's all the same. Um, and and I think that. If anyone is uh, a little turned off by by a lot of the narratives uh, that that go through all all the media right now about how everyone hates everyone mm-hmm. and how everyone is bad, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, I would encourage them just to, to like you know do what I did, just go to go to the meetups, do that kind of stuff. Um, most most of the, uh, of the you know developers, big and small, that I've met um, are, are they they got into games because they were. They were gamers, uh, and they and they and for the most part, I think they still think that way. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, yeah, of, yeah, yeah. A I lot, mean, a lot of people say things online that they wouldn't say to your face. And actually, by and large, most people are decent people when you meet them in person. Even if you have any agreement, disagreement about any topic under the sun, if you have a common interest, that being you know game playing or game development. That kind of cuts through all the other bullshit and yeah it's i think so what you're offering there is like don't sort of be afraid to sort of reach out and actually meet these people because even people that you think you might not like they could turn out to be really cool people and actually you could learn something from them yeah and i think doing it at the meetup events um especially if you're over 21 is a lot easier because you can just have a few beers and then everyone kind of loosens up a bit (laughs) <laughs> at that point oh you, you Americans know, the, with your your 21 drinking age we start drinking it 18 years oh, that's of age right. it's, yeah yeah, yeah. well we, we kind of do here too it's just not legal <laughs> it's just uh, not legal but yeah but but you know it's you know it helps it really does you know yeah. that's why that's why you know after you know gdc is next week right yeah. uh people are going to do more business at the hotel bar after than they'll uh-huh. do during the show you know it's just it's just everyone loosens up but no one that, has a face to put kind on of like is that kind of like back to the indie music analogy is that kind of like where people sort of they say oh dude i've been a fan of yours for a long time boy we should do a collaboration and you know you maybe come up with sort of that kind of relationship with other developers i mean is that kind of thing prevalent uh, I think I I definitely know people that I've met through the through the you know, the meetups and smaller shows uh, and the bigger shows that that didn't know each other before and ended up started you know they started working on stuff together mm-hmm. uh, and and obviously you know friendships arise out of that kind of thing too because you're you're all there for the same reason right <laughs> so yeah, yeah. You, immediately immediately you all know you have something to talk about you know and yeah. it's the people that uh, that who are not who are there for different reasons than than enjoying games that they, they tend to stand out. Yeah. Um, you know, and they and they tend to stick to themselves. Uh-huh. Uh, everyone else, everyone else, I think, tends to be very friendly. You know, whatever, whatever their background is. You know, whether they've been making games for ten years or a month. Yeah, that, and that's something I think a lot of game developers need to hear because I mean, if you were sort of just gauging what the game dev community is like just by what you see online, you kind of might get a few mixed signals. But yeah, it's it's good to hear that by and large people are friendly and if you've got some common ground i.e games then you know it's 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 a it's a cool industry to be part of yeah 
Yeah. I mean, if it's what you're into and you can get a job doing it or at the very least make money doing it yourself, like, why not? That's that's the absolute dream, <laughs> right? How you're doing that, what you love and you're getting think, money for it. I think for a lot of people, that's kind of the transition that they're sort of worried about because, like, they'll have a full-time job and games is like a part-time thing. I mean, for yourself, you worked in advertising, which I've worked in advertising as well. I know it, it, play, it pays pretty well. It gives you the time to sort of do stuff on the side. But, I mean, have you made that transition? Have you gone fully indie game developer now uh i did uh last last year at some point mm-hmm. uh or no let me think uh, october 2015 nice. uh is when i is when i went full-time on it and then it was a i think maybe a month after that that the i started talking with the publishers and then you know a few months after that that all that stuff got sorted out um so the timing just worked out really well it wasn't even trying to go full time in the doing doing game stuff it was more i don't like what i'm doing yeah. <laughs> more yeah. than more than you know going and doing it and so i have still since then you know, done done freelance projects here and there yeah. uh, and actually now that, now that the game is out i'm looking at you know of course i'll i'll, I'll do a few more here and there um, but you know i want to keep keep showing the game keep adding stuff to it uh, more stages more characters more weapons that kind of stuff because mm-hmm. uh, I spent a lot of time just trying to get that foundation in place to make adding that kind of stuff fast. Yeah, yeah. Or at least re- yeah, reasonably fast. Up, I think the community as well appreciate that, and I think a lot of games they get put. Well, we'll out see. Apparently, I gave see somebody them. cancer. Right? Well, his dog died. Apparently, his dog died as well. And but, his yeah. dog died. Jeez. <laughs> Jeez. Twelve out of ten. Yeah. yeah, that's yeah. excellent. Well, thanks very much for your time today, Nick. Um, great yeah. talking to you, and you've shared some great insights into the making of Sombrero, which is now on Steam, and it's apparently, what, it's on consoles as well? or uh, It's on Steam right now for Windows. Right now, I'm mm-hmm. working on um, I'm working on the Linux port. Oh, nice. uh, I'm working on ports to other... I'm going to try... I mean, the, the ultimate goal is to make it... is to get it on everything it can run on, mm-hmm. basically. <laughs> So uh, you know, so right right now it's yeah I have like a little ten- Linux machine built up for testing. It's working pretty well, and it has to go through you know all the all the official publisher testing. And uh, and I have a Shield version running native for uh, the Nvidia Shield. Uh, so I looked, and there was no there was no native four player party games for it. There was oh. you could stream games obviously, but there was no native games. I was like, oh, I wonder how hard that would be, and it ended up not being that hard. So I'm working on that too. That uh, and yeah, hopefully, cool. hopefully other con- hopefully other consoles as well. You know, in addition to in addition to that, and that th- and that thing's cool if you haven't checked it out yet. The Nvidia Shield, it's pretty I would, solid. I would definitely check that out. Okay, yeah. thanks, thanks yeah, again, anyway. Nick, and um, yeah, <laughs> thanks for coming on the show, and uh, it's been a blast. Thanks, man. Yeah, thanks, Stu. You have a good night.